Hi, my name is Alicia Silva. I will be speaking about the article that we read, which is the Human Genome Code, a persuasive, er, per se, pervasive encoding molding of chromatin structure and a solution of non-coding DNA mystery. So what exactly is the non-coding DNA mystery? Based off the article, I articulated that the non-coding of uh, DNA, non-coding DNA mystery is basically looking at the genes instead of looking at the proteins that code for uh, the specific genes in the human genome. So they're more looking at the proteins, but then they saw that it was actually the genes and how much spacing they had between the genes and the in the chromatids that would have led to believe that the human genome was less than a million uh, genes that actually code for it. So with research moving forward from there, uh, we see that the human genome is actually uh, 20,500 genes that make up the Human Genome Project. And here we in the, hum the non-coding DNA, we're seeing that we see a lot of junk DNA or just other information that is causing for more space to be taken up. So in summary, the article speaks about the coding sequence and how unevenly distributed that in the human genome that these genes are. So we are looking at GC rich isotores. I cannot pronounce that. I am so sorry of the H3 family, and we're also looking at the GC poor. So basically there we're looking at um, genome core, and we are looking at an empty space. So here we're stating that in the genomes, um, in the genes, we have a lot of spaces between each of the chromosomes that would be coding would give so much space for other information to be in and helps the spacing of the genes are in the chromosomes itself. And the FIH, FISH um, has also led us to see how open or closed the chromatins are with all the genes. So being euchromatic or heterochromatic respectively to the interface of cold and warm-blooded uh, vertebrates. So here we're basically looking at how much spacing each of the chromosomes based off the genes each chromosome has and also we're looking at the entirety of how much genes are in the, uh, the genome. As a personal opinion, I think that this DNA mystery has led to a lot of scientists to understand the complexity of DNA and how much we actually don't know and trying to piece all the pieces together of how the genes work to create these genotypes and phenotypes for these traits that we're looking for or not looking for in the span of life and um, we're looking at the spatial aspect of the chromosome so that kind of leads us to being able to see that Everything has a specific place, and if one change is done in the specific manner of the chromosomes, we have diseases that arise, and also we have a lot of misunderstanding of where things can go right, since there is so much space between the chromosomes and the genes. One wrong crossover or one mishap or one displacement of non-destruction can happen and which leads to more diseases and more misunderstanding and trying to go back into trying to understand why these chromosomes didn't do what they needed to do based off the space and the genes on those chromosomes can exacerbate some certain type of physiological problem for that individual that is looking for this. So it gives us a lot of understanding of why we need to do more research and how these genes definitely play, play a big role in the structure of life. It's, it's